Got a monster, got a lighter. Check, check, check. And speed action. What's up? <sighs> Not much, man. Just kicking back with a Coke and a glass of vodka. With Coke? Yep. So you're snorting it. This is going to be a speedy podcast tonight. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Awesome. It's actually Coca-Cola, but I still snort it. Yeah, I mean, what else would you do with it? Yeah. It's got you know, a straw. Only two things good for. Enemas and snorting. That's it. Enemas. <laughs> yeah. It really cleanses your colon. Coca-Cola does? Yeah, you never heard that? No, dude. <laughs> yeah, of course. Coca-Cola. Mountain Dew's a little spicy for that, but Coca-Cola is preferred. It can clean off a rusty nail. You don't think you can't clean your shitty colon? What is it like? Like the carbonation does it? Like OxyClean? It fucking like oxygenates your bowels no not the, the carbonation. carbonation the coconation coconation oh, okay yeah i believe it's the uh, third ingredient on the label let's see we got carbonated water caramel color <laughs> and coconation i'll be fucking damned i told you how many people you think are running to their fridges right now to see that coconation. Literally 30s of people. <laughs> Literally twos of people have just went and checked their Coca-Cola ingredients. We don't have a lot of Coke listeners on that so far. A lot of Mountain Dew fans. A lot of Mountain Dew. You know what I say. I like saw a, a British dude Dew. once with a shirt that said Mount and Dew me in oh. the Mountain Dew symbol. That's clever. Yep. Wish I would have thought of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whoever thought of that must have been fucking proud of himself <laughs> when he came up with I that. I mean, they put it on a t-shirt. They put it on a fucking t-shirt, of course. Yeah. The first, guy, the first guy that ever said fucking, uh, you ain't had pussy since pussy had you, I bet he was fucking proud of that shit, too. I bet he had a friend beside him when he said that to another friend, and the friend said, Zing! Zing. Gotcha. Yep. Gotcha, dude. This guy gotcha. Mm-hmm. Or maybe he just fired off a rim shot. Who knows? For me, I'd have given a rim job. Could have been There's... an alley-oop. Like, somebody threw out a, man, you ain't had pussy, and then his friend was like, since pussy had you... Oh, zing. He did the double finger point when he said that mm-hmm. big ass smile on his face. That's the running smack alley you. Oh my god. That should be homework for somebody to find out who come up with all these wonderful sayings. You'll never find it. Like, you know, miss me, miss me, now you gotta kiss me? Who thought of that? A lonely man, that's who. <laughs> Here lies a lonely man who people used to try to hit. <laughs> he became quite good at ducking blows. But unfortunately could never get a blow. For himself. Or others. We should make that into a t-shirt. It's got a gravestone on it. And it just says, miss me, miss me. Now you gotta kiss me. With quotation marks around it. And then underneath it, it says... Here lies Lonely Man. A lonely Man. I used to have a shirt that had a gravestone on it and it said, Wish You Were Here. Ha! Clever. Nice. Classic. It was apparently offensive to my eighth grade teachers, so I had to turn it inside out. <laughs> you ever had to turn a shirt inside out in school? Nope. Man, I've had to do it several times. Remember Big Johnson t shirts? You had one of those? Oh my god, did I ever. (laughs) (laughs) I was so proud of my Big Johnson shirt. It's like sixth grade. Had like. (laughs) 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 Oh my god, I can't believe how stupid those things. (laughs) Had like a rooster on the back and it was fighting. Mm -hmm. Said nobody beats our cocks. Boom. (laughs) 
roasted. Had to inside out it. I never got in trouble for a shirt, but, okay, I did the douchebag thing in high school, like my uh, freshman year, and I did my hair, like, twisted. I guess it wasn't too douchey because it was for a concert that I was going to, but I had my hair up, like, twisted, and uh, that day I was in, uh, actually, funny enough, Miss Johnson's class. Oh, man. Yeah, and her hall pass to go to the bathroom was a wooden J. Like, somebody made her a J in shop class. So I took the wooden J, and I went to go to the bathroom or whatever. And I come back from the bathroom, and I sit back in class. And uh, next thing I know, the principal comes through the door. And uh, he says, James, can I see you outside? And I was like, for what? And he goes, no, let me see you outside, and I'm taking your book bag. I was like, What? So he goes to reach for my book bag, and I stopped him, and I was like, no, I'm taking my fucking book bag. And he was like, no, James, you're not touching your book bag. I was like, yes, <laughs> yes, I am. And he was like, no, no, you're not. And I was like, then it's staying right here, we're going to have a problem. Because I was a fucker in high school, dude. Sounds like it. Yeah. So he decides to leave the book bag there, and we go outside of the classroom. And he says, okay, James, put your hands against the wall, and I'm going to pat you down. So I looked at him, and I said, are you a fucking cop? And he said, James, we can do this easy way, or we can do this the hard way. And I was like, okay, well, it's the hard way. He goes, the hard way is I call the cops, and they come here, and they arrest you. So I was like, arrest me for fucking what? And he goes, James, put your hands against the wall. So I said, you know what, let's do this the hard way, and you can get embarrassed when they don't find anything. So then he says, okay, well, a student reported that you have a gun, and you went to the bathroom with a gun. It was like the J. With a gun. It, it was the wooden J. <laughs> and then, then when that was established eventually, and he felt like a fucking idiot, he goes, you know, James, not everybody wears their hair like that. You know, that gives a message. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yep. It does give a message. I'm an asshole. It does. But I'm unarmed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got a wooden J. Let's discuss that douchebag. It made a wooden J for his fucking lame teacher. Dude, that's actually the second time I got accused of shooting, like, having a gun at school. Oh, so you were that kid. You were that weird little kid. No, nope, I was wasn't. To that. I wasn't. <laughs> the first time was a complete fluke, dude. Like, it was right after the Columbine shootings. Like in the 90s when I was in elementary school. And oh my fuck. God. Yeah, dude. You're and young. <laughs> 25. I was in high school. Yeah. I was in high school when that happened. I'm young. You're old. I know. When, when, I, when, I, me. when I was in elementary school, dude, when Columbine happened, it was the same year that Men in Black came out. And uh, me and Matt were talking about uh, Men in Black. And I was like, yeah, dude, I like that I like that fucking little cricket gun. You know, that little gun that makes a big boom. So I was doing, like, the hand motions or whatever. And Matt was like, no, dude, I like the fucking, the, that big shotgun. He was doing the hand motions. And the teacher flipped out because she didn't hear a conversation. She just saw us, like, doing gun hand motions or whatever. <laughs> so the next thing I know, I'm getting called into the principal's office. And I had to be psychologically evaluated before I was allowed to return to school. <laughs> I'd have been like, fuck them guns, I like the song. Here come the MIBs. Yep. Yeah. Here come the MIBs. Fifth grade. Fifth grade, and I had to be psychologically evaluated because she thought I was going to shoot up the school. Nice. Yep. When I was in high school, right after Columbine, uh, someone went to McDonald's and used the payphone to call in a bomb so right at my school. <laughs> <laughs> so... I was lucky enough to be driving at that point, so I didn't have to go to school that day. Because when I drove to school, like cops had all the entrances blocked and sent me away. But all the assholes that rode the bus and walked to school, they were promptly walked over to the middle school auditorium. They had to sit there for half the day, then go back to class. <laughs> yes, score one for me. Scored one for the failures. Dude, he probably did that just so that you didn't have school the next day. Yeah, but they figured out who it was. 
They did it like three times before they caught him. When I was in high school, me and Smog went, uh, I picked him up, and, uh, we went in my car and parked across the street from the high school at night, and my plan was I was gonna go and I was gonna cut the power lines to the school so the school would get canceled. And looking back on it, my motivation wasn't to cancel school, it was just to do it, to do it, you know what I mean? And, uh, so Smog didn't want to go and jump the barbed wire fence into the back of the school, so he was going to be the getaway driver, so I gave him my keys, and he was going to pull down the road, and then when he sees me run out to the road, he was supposed to pick me up. (laughs) And, uh, so I jump the barbed wire and I go back there with the wire cutters and all of a sudden the back doors opened up and these I don't know what they were doing there like at 2 in the morning but janitors were there and they came out and I start running and they start chasing me so I jumped the barbed wire fence in the back where uh, where the woods were so one of them stayed back there by the barbed wire so I'm like laying down flat in the woods because they didn't want to jump that fence and like I was like petrified I was like oh fuck so I just like laid down flat like in the woods and they come out with a fire extinguisher and they started spraying like the tree line (laughs) to try to like flush me out and they sprayed like right over me I just laid there until they finally gave up and then I ran back to the car but thank god they interrupted me because my dumb ass probably would have cut that line and then I would have got electrocuted (laughs) yeah Oh, shit. Was Smog waiting on you there still? Yep. <laughs> he was. The story would have been funnier, like, and he just, like, I took a really long time and he drove to McDonald's or something. <laughs> no, he was waiting at the church across the street from the school. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. Yep. No, I was never uh, accused of any shootings. Like, once they realized Smog was with you, he used to tell me that they used to call him down to the principal's office pretty regularly. Yeah, me <laughs> to too. <pat> down. <laughs> Checking for weapons and shit. You guys went to the same high school, didn't you? Tecumseh, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I wish I'd have went there. I've been right in there getting patted down. Yep. I went to, like, an art school... No, I'm just kidding. I'm fucking lying. <laughs> All the dorks and nerds got accused of fucking being school shooters at my school. What happened on a regular basis? Fucking. One time someone wrote boom on a piece of paper and we had to all go to the football field. I mean, that was all that was on the paper. It was like boom or some shit or a drawing of a bomb. Dude, after Columbine, everything went crazy. It was like kind of like a. Like, back in the day, you hear about, like, in the 60s and 70s where they would have the nuclear bomb drills or whatever where they'd get under the desk. That was that was our generation's version of that, was the code red drills for school shooters. We didn't have any drills, but I already had my plan. I was like, fucking window. <laughs> that was my plan, too. The teachers... I don't give a fuck how high up I am. I'm going out the window. See yeah. ya. The, the, we had drills. It was called code red drills. And what would happen was, and they told every single student about it, right, was that a voice would come over the intercom and say, code red. And then all the students get underneath their desks. And then the teacher would take a piece of cardboard paper that was located next to the window and tape it onto the window and lock the door. And that was going to protect us from the school shooter, right? Yeah, get under the desk in execution style. Yeah. (laughs) My desk would have been used to break the window. And I'd have been fucking flying behind my desk moments later. <laughs> okay, students, now get under your desk so that you're already on your hands and knees and you're an easy target. Because everybody knows bullets cannot penetrate door locks. <laughs> my fucking... <laughs> I would have missed the day that it was all a drill and just heard code red. Fucking... <laughs> oh, Oh my god, he jumped. <laughs> that was just the drill today. He leaped four stories. Broke both his legs. Both his legs. But he's living to tell another day. 
But so was everyone else, because it was just a drill. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have got shot in a school shoot. Wouldn't have happened. Like, unless I was right there when they walked in, like, I'm right by them before they're fucking busting off rounds. That's the only way they're getting me. Because I ain't fucking stopping to save nobody else or nothing. I'm pushing girls down. I'm fucking smacking people. I'm getting the fuck up out of there. Fuck that. I value my life. Almost too much. <laughs> I'm the guy if there's ever a house fire, I'm standing outside naked waiting on my wife and kids. Uh-huh. <laughs> Coaching them. <laughs> Crawl! Crawl underneath the smoke! That's me. Uh. That's not true. That's pretty much true. I'm a coward. Like, here comes the fire. There goes the Jamie. (laughs) Jerks love fire. Yeah. I do what others won't do. And that's run. Every man for himself. (laughs) Dude, I was was at work one time, and uh, we had had discussions about it, like, you know, if someone had come back to work disgruntled with a gun and shooting, uh-huh. what would happen? I was like, listen, you ever seen me just take off running at a full sprint for what? And you don't know why? Just fucking follow me. Because I'm not going to tell you what's going on. I'm not sticking around long enough to say gun or anything. I'm running. So you guys better fucking follow me. So sure enough, I'm pushing some shit out and I get it flip it over and do all the shit I got to do with it. And I flip this cardboard up on this big plastic container. Uh-huh. And about two inches from my face is a raccoon. And I take <laughs> off running. <laughs> like, whoosh, whoosh. I walk next to this girl named Dora. She's like, Jamie, what's the problem? And she tried to grab my arm. And I just ran through her. <laughs> <laughs> and then she grabbed a hold of the back of my shirt and kind of used me as a tow truck. <laughs> I was bringing her with me. I'm running around the corner and finally I stopped. She's going, what? 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 She had a look of fucking terror on her face. I went, raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> this was just like a fucking year ago, too. Yeah, I saw an experiment a while back where, like, they had this flash mob that would just break out running down a street or whatever, and they'd run, like, past people, and then people would, like, turn around and run with them, thinking that something was, like, coming. <laughs> oh, I'm going. I'm going with the crowd. Yeah. I've already had that happen to me. Anybody listen to this that listened to the last episode that was put up about the gathering? It was in 2002 I was at a gathering in Peoria, Illinois. I'm walking down this hallway. There's like this big fucking crowd of people chanting you shit. Like, it was like a 1960s protest. They were like, set them free! Set them free! Standing at this door, like this office that was in there because it was in a convention center then it wasn't outdoors Mm -hmm. they moved from convention centers to outdoors they went to outdoors the very next year but in any ways there's fucking all kind of cops over there and all of a sudden I look back like I was getting close to the crowd and all of a sudden the crowd is running at me so I just start running too so I'm a good fucking 50 feet in front of the crowd and I just duck into this room and like five other people do and then security comes and slams the door shut and locks us in the room. It was fucking awful. <laughs> I had no idea what was going on. And then finally, like, I don't know, 20 minutes later, they come and open the doors like, you guys need to go straight outside now. Well, it turned out the fucking cra- the cops had shot tear gas into the crowd or some kind of, you know, in the little paintball things. Uh-huh. <laughs> and we were walking out, and everybody was fucking coughing and gagging, and I was like, this ain't nothing. <laughs> Start choking the fuck out of me. <laughs> so, I already experienced seeing the crowd run, and fucking gone ahead and running, and not knowing why. Yeah. But what happened was, some girl showed her tits, and they fucking, the cops, like, arrested her and took her into this little office thing. To wait for some other cops to come and get her, and a crowd had formed. And they were out, out, got a little unruly, I suppose, for the cops. For showing a little titty? Yeah. 
Yep, sure enough, showing a little titty. I'm not sure if they were little titties or big titties, but either way, they got trouble for showing titties. And they fucking, you know, they have these things in the smallest towns, so the fucking littlest things freak these guys out. Mm -hmm. It doesn't help when you're surrounded by cops in full riot gear. That already gives off, like, the impression that something's going to happen. Yeah. So the crowd's just like, hmm, nothing's happened yet. Might as well make something happen. Don't let these cops have out the right gear for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's flip a car over. All right. That's how that shit works. Uh-huh. Sky high, brother. Sky fucking high. Everyone there is half cook on meth anyways. So fighting the cops is not a problem. What that reminds me of, unrelated but it pops into my head, is uh, there was this farm in New Carlisle that me and some of my, I don't even remember who was with me now, but me and some of my friends were fucking around on, and we were messing with this like huge group of cows and bulls hmm. that were in this field. <laughs> were and, you cow tipping? No, we weren't cow tipping. We were just fucking with them. And uh, I was in like the middle of the field or whatever, and they started running away from me, like, right when I jumped the fence. Like, they ran to the other side of the field, and it was a huge fucking herd of them. And then they turned around, and they started charging me, like, running right at me, dude. So I started to run, and my feet got stuck in, like, the shit and mud, like, because <laughs> it had just rained. And I started, like, dude, I could not move. So I just turned around, and I was like, I think I saw this in a movie once, and I just screamed, like, as loud as I could, and, like, waved my hands. I was like, ah! <laughs> and it worked. Like, they dispersed and <laughs> ran back to the other side. I wish that was on tape. I wish that shit was recorded. <laughs> All I know is the boy had his feet stuck in the shit. Started waving his arms and screaming. I knew he was stuck. Dead giveaway. Dead giveaway. Cut it in. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Uh, I, I tried that again with an alligator down here. <laughs> it didn't work out as well. I, I was flounder gigging at night. That's when, where you, you mean walk- an alligator was less fearful than a cow? <laughs> Can you believe it? <laughs> amazing. <laughs> I was walking around with a, with an under- underwater light and a spear. That's how you gig flounder at night. And, uh, on the way back to my car, there was this alligator that stomped into the water, like, in between me and my car, and it just looked at me. It was a fucking big-ass alligator, dude. It just popped its head over the water and looked at me and started hissing, and, like, I was like, okay, I'm gonna wait a second, and it's gonna, it's just gonna swim away. I'm I'm gonna be fine. It's just going to look at me, and it's just going to go away, and I'm going to go to my car, I'm going to go home, and I'm going to cry into a pillow, right? (laughs) And it it fucking, dude, it just sat there and hissed at me. So I was like, okay, think cows. (laughs) So I started screaming and, like, slapping my spear on the water. And it was like, bitch! (laughs) Please. It, It just looked at me and hissed at me again, and then after about... It had to be about a two-minute stare down. And then eventually we were both the bigger men and went our separate ways. Oh, shit. If I ever ran into an alligator into the wild, there'd be two movements. A bow movement, my sprint. (laughs) That would be it. I'd be out that motherfucker. (laughs) Fucking alligator. Fucking Troy from Swamp People popped out and was like, Shoot! Shoot! Shoot him! Shoot him, please! You did, have... the <laughs> you did have a spear, though. Do you think that spear could have penetrated its skull? No, dude. <laughs> My spear is a little aluminum pole with two prongs at the end. <laughs> you were like, I got you, motherfucking went stabbed, and it was just bent. That thing wasn't going to protect me for shit. <laughs> <laughs> There's this one redneck motherfucker down here, and, like, we started, we were fishing together, just by chance. Like, I was fishing, he pulled up, and he started fishing. And, like, out of nowhere, he was like, oh, you seen any alligators out here? I was like, yeah. <laughs> he was like, oh, you know what you do? 
if one bites your arm, you just reach your arm down and you 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 put your arm way down in its throat and then it opens up the flap and it can't breathe underwater. <laughs> You know, I've heard that's true, but I doubt I'd put that much thought into it. No, of course not. Your fucking arm's getting eaten. <laughs> my thought would be, no, not my arm. Like, I'm yeah. Jacking I'm jacking gonna... off arm. <laughs> like, is this or before or after he bites it off and swallows it? <laughs> now, is this before or after the death rolls that they do before they take you underwater? Because you can't breathe underwater as long as they can. No. Uh, I'm thinking that might be before, but uh, I'm sure. My cousin had told me I drowned it three weeks later. When we found him floating in the quarry, he had no arm. It was the darndest thing. <laughs> <laughs> Boy was missing his wiener, too. Don't know what that was all about. I think it was aliens. <laughs> it had to be a space alien. I think aliens beat down... My grandfather, Cletus T. Jones, he was abducted by a space alien. They put all sorts of things in his anus. They put a remote control, an alarm clock, and a moon pile there. And I saw it all happen. See, I opened his door, and the aliens had took the form of my uncle Cletus. <laughs> And when I opened the door, I seen them probe him with, I seen them probe him with their waist probes. They had waist probes, you see, shaped like penises. About five inches in length. About, about <laughs> half an inch in girth. <laughs> they wore the darndest clothes. Leather studded dog collar. Leather biker jacket and cowboy boots. And but she, that was all. She couldn't scream for help because they had a mysterious red rubber ball <laughs> that was shoved in his mouth. See? What you reckon that ball was for? <laughs> <laughs> Look like a pig with an apple in his mouth mm-hmm. and a man in his ass. And when I asked him about it, I think they used a mind control device on him because he said he didn't remember nothing about that. See, and I saw the mind control device. It looked like that thing on Men in Black. It was long, it was skinny, and it had an on button on the bottom that when you twisted it, it got to buzzing and doing its mind controlling. (laughs) I think we've done enough of that. (laughs) What are you talking about enough of that? My granddaddy. Now back to his story. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> back to my granddaddy. It took me about 20 minutes to fetch that moon pie out of there, I reckon. Mm-hmm. But I got to eat it once I found it. <laughs> oh, shit. It wasn't that good. In fact, kind of tastes like shit. The show is called That's Too Far, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it, sh- it should be called That's Too Long, because that's how long we did that impression. Yeah. It, far- <laughs> it should be called That's Too Gay. <laughs> <laughs> if you're still listening, we thank you. Thank you very much. If you're not, we don't care, because we got the play counted already. Bazing! And if you have an erection, you're welcome.